All right, so data. How do we collect data? Give me any of the answers. And I probably don't know them in order, but maybe I'll remember from last year. How do we organize? We're going to collect data. It could be three weeks worth of data. In, in bio, not so much. But when you get to higher level sciences, you, like a population lab, you're going to study for a period of weeks. You want to organize your data in the best way that can be interpreted at the end for when you draw conclusions. Okay, but it seems like the graphs part. Good, graphs. Look, if you notice, my notes, there's always pictures to guide you towards the answers. I'm very visual, so I include pictures. So graphs is correct, and I believe graphs would be the first one. Yes. Good, journaling. Wrong one. Daily notes. Pictures. What else besides pictures? You know, I haven't updated these notes in a long time, but what's even better than pictures now? Video. Write that word down. I'll add it. Videos is awesome. Why? You could, you could have performed a step that kind of changed the whole outcome, and by replaying the video, you could see the mistake you made. So videos is great. What else? You see a graph there? What else? Look at the box. Yeah. Excel worksheets. Yeah. What does an Excel worksheet give you? What's that called? Table. Tables or charts. Good. That's what's missing. Now, how many of you have graphed before? And what kind of graphs exist? There, there's, I have both of them there. Bar graph, line graph. That's pretty much it. Bar graphs and line graphs, I'm sure there's a ton of graphs, but when the majority of the time you're gonna use a bar graph or a line graph. Have you ever thought why you choose one over the other? It depends on the data being recorded. Good, so <clears throat> what data decides whether it's, and I'll show you here, we got a line graph and a bar graph. When do you use one over the other? If it's a line graph, it would be like a plant growing, you can show like the different stages over time. Okay, good. Oh, growth over time. What do growth and time have in common? The more time passes, the more something will grow. Like, I guess. Maybe. It could die too. Think growth measurement and time measurement. What do they have in common? They increase. Getting there? They both measure something. How? They can change. It's over a period of time. Variables. They're good. They're going to be both variables. Uh, you're actually going to graph your independent variable and your dependent variable. Measuring, okay? When you're dealing with measurement, what are you dealing with? What do growth and time have in common? They both progress over time. So we're talking about time. If you're talking about progression, what are you dealing with? Weeks is the same thing. When I look at the time, what am I looking at? Numbers. <laughs> that was painful. You use a line graph when both variables are numbers. So it doesn't have to be over time. Time is obviously a big factor in experimenting. So if the variable is a number and time is part of it, you're going to use a line graph. You use a bar graph when one variable is a number and the other is not. Like what? Okay, you could express months. What else? Let's say we're looking at a plant and we didn't want to look at growth. What else can we look at that describes life of a plant? The color. The color. Good. So if it's color, you're going to use a bar graph. All right, good. <clears throat> now, when you graph data, one variable goes on the y and one goes on the x. Anybody know which is which? Y goes up as vertical. Good. I got the Y vertical, but which variable, and I will go like this, goes on the Y, and which variable goes on the X? The X is an independent variable. Good job. Independent variable and dependent variable. Always. Your first lab, you will graph by hand, 
And all of these points that I just gave you in the notes will be applied on your graph. So your graph, I'm going to look, did you choose a line graph or did you choose a bar graph? That's for starters. Bless you. Did you choose dependent variables on the x? That's a mistake. So I'm going to look at all that before I give you the two points for your, for your graph. Two points being 20. And I'm going to go over the rubric because I, your first lab has a rubric. And it's posted with the lab so you can understand how the grading takes place. And that's another great thing about Canvas. And let me pause because we don't need to have a whole conversation of Canvas. Um, Corona tells you that your hypothesis was correct or not. Good. It's going to accept or reject your hypothesis. It must include that statement. And what else? What's the big word there that's covered? What is the conclusion going to do that the results does not, or your data does not? So Give me a better word. Explain. explain. Why did this happen? I need an explanation. Why did the plant grow? That's where the background knowledge and data comes in together. What you know that allowed you to, the because, remember yesterday you wanted to do your hypothesis with the word because? Because should be in your conclusion. Why did this happen? All right, so tomorrow's our first lab. And um, you don't have to write this down well, because I'm going to give you the uncovered video portion, but if you want to write it down, that's fine. I'm actually just going to move all the things and go over it really quickly so you have time to work. Every lab report will include the following information. You're going to have a problem statement, a question, or a purpose, something that ex, you know, kind of describes what you're doing. Then you're going to create a hypothesis after we have read the procedures. In most cases, you will be rewriting the procedures. I want to know that you understand what the steps are in the lab you're about to perform. In some cases, you will create your own procedures. Materials, sometimes you can underline on procedures, depends. But if you notice the point system, you get one point for rewriting your problem statement. And I want it Roman numeral one problem statement. Underline and the statement underneath. Like this. Okay? Roman numeral two, hypothesis, statement underneath. So on and so on. When you get to data is where the points start to increase. And if you notice, I left hypothesis and data points fluctuating. If the hypothesis is worth one point, the data will be worth two. In some labs, I got, I'm going to eliminate whoops, all of these first steps. And we're just going to go straight here. And it's going to be four points for data, or, or six points for data, four points for whatever I readjust the rubric, depending on the lab. Okay. Depending on the amount of data you're collecting, this lab you're going to do a, a chart and a graph, so the data will be worth two points. Okay. Um, your conclusions, four points. This is out of ten. What happens if you don't write a conclusion? Raise your hand if you can tell me. Um, you don't get the four points, and you get six. Which is what? Sixty. A sixty. You don't write. <coughs> the conclusion, and you will end up with a 60. So what does the conclusion have to be? A simple paragraph. What does that mean? Five sentences. Three if you use the word and, right? Three to five sentences. Three really good sentences, five short, straight to the point sentences. What do you think has to be stated for you to earn the maximum amount of points in your conclusion? Good. We're going to restate and answer the hypothesis. Add the word restate there. What else? After um, you put what it is that you were ready, you're going to go to and explain why. Okay, explain why, two points. If you don't explain why, what's your grade? You got everything else right. You didn't explain what's your grade. 80. This is why I tell you your labs are like quizzes. You don't explain to me why this happened, you're going to get an 80. 
Now let's say you explained it and it was a little bit off. You could still get an A. If you explain something that has nothing to do with the lab, honestly, I really can't help you. But you'll probably still get an 85 just for trying. You leave the explanation out, minus two. What else do you need to get the maximum four points? So you're gonna restate data. So if the data was the plant grew one inch the first week and then it grew two inches the second week, you summarize overall throughout two weeks of checking plant growth, the plant grew. You restate data somehow in a sentence and then you get a perfect lab. Any questions?